Today's video is actually on a group of uh, fishes that I've talked about quite a few times and I thought it would be interesting to talk about in this context. So this is more specifically about the eel tail banjo catfish and this was described in 1970. Um, I will state as a disclaimer none of these specimens have been killed for the purpose of the video or for being wet specimens. Wet specimens being animals that are preserved or plants any sort of biological matter preserved in alcohols, in this case ethanol, but often they can be preserved in other alcohols. They'll be fixed in something like formalin, and formalin is the only one I know that they could be fixed in. So these are not decaying, they're completely preserved, and they've been in here for a minimum. These ones about six weeks, they've, um, sorry, six months at least in alcohol, but other ones have been in a little bit less. So Platysacus is a member of aspirin in a day and these are the banjo catfishes and I have quite a few different examples in my collection but these ones are platystachys and they are I think the word is monotypic genus there's only one species in the genus and if I just show you here gonna let it zoom well focus so this fish is absolutely amazing and I have quite a few specimens here so here is another, and you can see they're very variable in pattern, but this pattern does reduce an alcohol, alcohol really does bleach them. And you can see that, if I let it zoom, they're patchy as well, there's loads of patches on this fish. And it doesn't particularly change, I find, as they age. And this one is my only male. Males seem really difficult to find, or they just take ages to mature, but he's one of the smallest. You can see he is male, but if I show you the dorsal fin which is this one here it's a lot longer than in the females and wet specimens are quite fragile so I'm not going to try and pull it out but yeah it's a dorsal fin that will sort of flop over and you can look at these strong pectoral fin spines which if I zoom in on they're really thick and this is what the fish use to stridulate or make sound the long caudal Oh, trying to focus, uh, long caudal peduncle. So this is the caudal peduncle and this is the tail. So the length is measured to the uh, base of the tail. So platystachys means broad or flat needle, referring to shape, they're very sort of flat, dorsally, ventrally flattened. See, uh, and that is absolutely brilliant. They are really unusual. And cotyledophores actually refers to where the eggs place themselves and it's really difficult. No one's actually ever bred them in captivity. But some people have had individuals brought in with the eggs attached. And the eggs would be attached to the abdomen of the female by little stalks known as cotyledophores, I believe. Um, or maybe that's a plant name, but <laughs> that is where the cotyledophores forest comes from the name meaning those little stalks that eggs attached to and these females actually did have eggs inside of them I doubt they're fertile but they must produce the eggs externally and then sort of rub them on their belly I guess so Platystachys cotyledophores comes from the eastern side of South America from Venezuela down to Brazil and they're really variable they come from soft waters hard waters even brackish and occasionally they will swim between rivers in marine but I wouldn't recommend putting in marine they often probably be caught in softer harder waters but not brackish or marine so they will need acclimatizing probably to that and they are debatably one of the largest aspirinidae you have aspredo aspredo which is a very large member, but Platystachys is one of the large ones, and I don't think you'll ever find um, a spreader, a spreader in captivity, but you will find Platystachys cotyledophorus, and these are usually only in stores that will wild import, so they're not common at all, and, you can say, and they grow to 30 centimetres stand length, so that is the measurement from the tip of the head, to just before the tail starts, the end of the caudal peduncle. So a lot of that is the actual length. The actual total length would include that little bit there, which is 
tiny bit of the caudal fin or tail fin. So their habitat is really variable and I don't think many people really know about it. We've got footage of them in the wild but I guess they're not so popular that people go out to collect them. They're often found in sandy, silty substrates and in captives you can see they're really good at bearing. Not as good as Brunocephalus which you'll find really deep in the substrate but these guys will kind of go to some level underneath the substrate. And this is a really good hiding mechanism, I guess also to help them find food um, or rest between times that food is occurring. This means they do need a sandy substrate, a gravel substrate really neglects them and I guess will cause somewhat of stress from not being able to hide. And you can see that this is really reflected in their morphology. If I get the mayor now, and sorry there is loads of slime on them, they do shed their sli um, slime coat. So I think that's happened in the alcohol. But you can see he is very dorsally, ventrally flattened. And that allows him to hide in that substrate really well. The sand I find in many aspirin the day actually sticks to skin quite well. Probably helping them um, hide even further. And catfish do not have scales, they have skin. So you can see that there. And he will hide in that substrate looking up with his tiny little eyes because these eyes are probably not the dominant scent it's most likely the taste buds covering the entire body of the fish and not just the barbels that are there um i can't see any or like obvious lateral line pores but they are probably a lot smaller than my eyes are allowed but there are lo probably loads of different sensory pits around the head and these are quite common in most fishes and this allows the fish to sense vibrations and differences in pressure. So this fish really doesn't need the eye, its eyes for that much. And in the sort of dark gloomy substrate, probably under silts and leaf litter, they won't really need it that much. And their food's going to be really hidden as well. Just waiting for my camera to focus. Oh. May it, uh, there we go. And their colouration really does break up their shape a lot. They are the same colour probably as a brownie silk that's coming out. And those areas probably would be where silt settles. So as a river flows down, it's usually the speed, the velocity goes down. And it will stop uh, picking up um, silt and it will start dropping it. And this is likely the sort of waste, soils, woods, anything that's coming down from upstream. So this fish is really well adapting at hiding and it's got no obvious features from above that sort of substrate line. So it's not going to be one that other fish are probably going to start predating. <clears throat> the long caudal peduncle is for locomotion, they use that to swim. I've got videos of them move, uh, swimming and it will help them move. They're not the greatest in the water column but they're okay. And they will use these pectoral fins, these strong pectoral fins, to glide. So, their diet, the most insectivores, they probably are more omnivorous as well. They probably will eat little bits of uh, periplankton. Um, more like biofilms and stuff because catfishes are really great generalists sometimes and if it tastes nice they might might eat it but it's difficult to say I thought from my experience they eat whatever they can this uh, species which does lead them very prone to bloat and I've experienced bloat um, in the gut from frozen foods and if they eat too much they seem very prone to just bloating up and egg bound binding as well Reproduction, um, sorry, behaviour, they're really peaceful, um, chilled and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I've experienced communication with each other, but I have experienced stridulation uh, where the male started uh, vibrating his pectoral fins um, when the water was actually lowering um, rather than the reduced in temperature, but the flow was turned off because I was water changing and the male was making loud popping sounds towards the females. Um, if they do feel threatened or getting picked up by the fish, which could happen, I wouldn't keep them with large 
predatory fish or geophagus or something like that which really could disturb them but they will if anything gets between those pectoral fins they will clamp down on it and I've had a few cuts where I've been picking or picking them up move them out of the way and they've really done some harm but if you look at this individual I guess this is adaption to predation uh, let's get it closer You can see here, that's probably for jabbing inwards, I'd guess. And it is quite sharp. It's very what we call serrated, these pectoral spines. So this is pectoral spine, and then will be a few pectoral rays in there. So they do kind of would need, I guess, not what you'd think of the, a typical aquarium, aquarium for something of that size. They probably would eat smaller fish as well. They've never been bred in captivity. We do, uh, as I've said, of cotton male stridulating, but I don't know if that was uh, reproductive behaviour. Um, I have had females with eggs inside of them, but never had them actually, like, push them out. <laughs> um, and we do know that their eggs are like held on stalks on the females till they hatch and I assume the female then dispenses them if that's the right word. My only assumption is that it actually swim downstream to uh, spawn because I've always struggled with them doing anything with their eggs, often egg binding, when kept at the same sort of parameters. So I'd assume somewhat, maybe making them go more brackish in um, if they're starting to produce eggs, which is going to be a real challenge. And maybe this is the trigger for actual egg development. And they are an absolute brilliant species. So if we look at this anatomy, so this female, I think this is the swim bladder, but I've, in cutting it, it's kind of come up. So sorry, this is not the most attractive under underneath as I drop it into a plant um, if you look at this species it's got uh, there's a ventral fin or anal no, sorry the anal fin goes all the way underneath and it's pretty long and it's not you can't really see it on wet specimens because it really sticks down we also have the ventral fins pectoral these beautiful barbels and a very forwards facing mouth it's well, it's feeding from the bottom, it is ventrally facing, but it is also going forward, so it's not like a rasping fish. They are going to be, I would say, not very good at clean up crew, but they would benefit. Um, they, they would feed on leftover foods, which could be a risk in their digestive tract. And as I said before, they do shed their skin. This is often a stress response uh, to changing water parameters. And this skin is more of a, it kind of comes off in sheets. There's no way I'd be able to preserve it. But it makes my, um, probably half of the muck in that is partially their skin. And that is absolutely disgusting looking. But replacing alcohol, it costs money. <laughs> um, and it doesn't really harm them, but I will have to replace the alcohol eventually. But look at that. So this is one of the darker specimens. That's a solid black one. This is a light one. There's several variants. So this is a light one. I don't know if it's anything related to locality. I always think it's individuals. So this is a light one. They all have white patches. And this is a saddled one. Oh, just trying to get a better view. This is a saddled one, and you can see patterning is rather beautiful, and they are absolutely amazing, but for me, it's when they start producing eggs is an absolute nightmare, and I could not stop them from doing it, and I think I'll leave it till, leave this species till when I get an aquarium that I can convert all oh, resolution, it's not focusing, convert to brackish anyway. So sort of a species only would be good. Perhaps one with 
a Mano shrimp would work. I think they would eat a lot of the Manos, but that's fine. <laughs> um, something like that, because their Manos might even, that might even trigger them to spawn. I mean, their eggs to hatch. Anyway, thank you for watching.